Welcome back to another episode of Casey Campbell's Videocast. Casey Campbell here from Great Lakes Post. We are pleased to be joined by Brett Barnes from WCIA CBS3 in Champaign, Illinois. And you're probably wondering why we're having someone from Illinois on. Because if you haven't heard, the IHSA approved basketball for boys and girls going against the State Health Department, the State Board of Education, and the governor. Um, games practices supposed to start November 16th. Game's supposed to start November 30th. We shall see what happens then. It's been an interesting few days for you, Brett. How's it going, man? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me on. It's definitely been an interesting few days and not a lot of sleep in between that. A lot of time at work trying to figure all this stuff out, but there's at least some hope, a, gl a glimmer of a chance for these kids that they might get to play basketball this winter. And I think for a lot of people that are fans of high school sports, you know, that was a good sign. Well, there's a lot of high school sports that did not get a chance to play, um, you know, here um, down in Illinois, of course, football is football, soccer, volleyball didn't get a chance to play this fall. And now with this announcement and many other, and likely many public schools are probably not going to be playing basketball until maybe things get better. And that we don't even know if that's going to happen in the time period. So what are schools kind of saying to you in what are we going to do or how are we going to do this or what should we do? What are they the roller coaster continues in terms of are we going to play or are we not going to play? There's so many things that fall down the line from that over the overarching topic of can we pull this thing off and play? And in Illinois, it really all goes back to Governor J.B. Pritzker, and he has pretty much said from the beginning, Casey, that he thinks a vaccine needs to come out for there to be contact or high risk sports. So on Tuesday, when he moved basketball for boys and girls from a medium risk sport to a high risk sport, it certainly opened a lot of eyes and, and a lot of eyebrows to people and made it really, really difficult for Illinois to get to that point. Under its guidelines and restrictions and protocols, it was at a level two uh, and to get to games and competition, it has to be at level three. Well, by Governor Pritzker moving it back down to level one, that means they can't have inter-squad scrimmages. That means they can't have contact days for practice. They're essentially just doing skill work for boys and girls basketball right now. Uh, moving forward here is going to be the norm. But then the IHSA comes out the following day, just 24 hours later, and says it is going to go against Governor Pritzker and the government and the Illinois Department of Public Health and Illinois State Board of Education's guidance and ruling saying that they're gonna start the season on November 16th. And so you have this battle royale shaping out here in the next couple of weeks and potentially months moving forward. I think there's a lot that's gonna go into this and there are way more questions now than even there were three days ago on Monday when we started this week, uh, way more questions than answers moving forward. So what is, so what can a school do? Who do you see playing? Does anyone play? So I think the, uh, the private schools probably have a better chance of playing than public schools right now. I don't see big public schools rolling out and starting practice with full contact on November 16th with game November 30th. I just, I can't in my mind fathom that right now. But I think, you know, we have quite a few rural schools here in Illinois. You know, I think there could be some that go out and say, hey, we're going to go do this. But a lot of it is going to come down to can these schools get insurance? Are there insurance providers going to cover them if they go against the Illinois State Board of Education? Because that's who funds their schools. And so if the Illinois State Board of Education or the governor, whoever else threatens to take away their funding, not insure them from insurance providers, then I think you're gonna see the rubber hit the road there pretty quick and schools are gonna have to pivot one way or the other and make decisions. I just can't wrap my head around that happening with them going against that. Essentially what the IHSA did was say, hey, look, we're allowing schools to make this decision. We're trying to go forward. They're putting it on the school districts now to say, you make the choice, but we're opening the floodgates here for a season. Well, basically, you know, does this kind of go back to when the IHSA back early in this summer turned control over to the governor? Yeah, so in July, this was a monumental day for high school athletes, coaches, ADs, parents, everybody involved when the IHSA conceded control to the government because then it allowed Governor Pritzker 
and all of his cabinet to make decisions for the IHSA moving forward. Now, they have since tried to get that control back, and yesterday was a big step for that, trying to say, look, we're going to go ahead with the season. But that day in July, I think, is when it all changed. And from all the coaches that I've talked to, that was really the turning point from the IHSA essentially washing its hands clean and saying, we can't do this anymore. We're going to turn it over to the government officials. You talked to, uh, you talked to Craig Anderson yesterday. What, obviously, he was the one that had to make the call. What was he saying, and does he think that this is going to happen? So I think he used the words cautiously optimistic when I directly asked him how confident he was that this will even play. And I think he's hopeful for that. He has a son that's a three-sport athlete. He, he wants them to play, right? Everyone wants there to be safety. I think no one is going to argue that the kids need to be safe. How that is implemented then becomes the big question. Craig wants them to play. And the IHSA does take a lot of backlash on a lot of things. Some of it's warranted in my eyes. But I think all along through this, they have legitimately wanted to play for the kids, number one, and then for them as an organization. They need games to play and function as an association. If they don't have games, then they're not making money or at least being in a sense where they can operate. So they want the games. And I think that gets misconstrued quite a bit of the time. But... I had followed it up and asked him how safely he thinks it can be done. And he said he feels good it can be done safely. He was also asked about possible litigation with all of this. And he said he didn't check with his legal team, which somewhat surprised me before this decision was made. This isn't just him, though, Casey. This was the board of directors that ultimately voted to make this happen. He's just the executive director. He answers all the questions. But it really falls back on the board of directors and them voting. And I'll just say it completely shocked me that they, they went against the government. I mean, that's a huge step for them to do that. And I don't know how many organizations across the country would be willing to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, to, I even talked to my own state and they said they wouldn't do it. Um, so what now you talked about, like, you know, there's obviously going to be obviously going to be protocols. You mentioned, um, I was watching other people saying face coverings is going to be worn by players, coaches and officials. Um, and also, I don't think 50 capacity, that includes, you know, players and stuff in there with that. So basically, they're going to be playing in front of no fans. Yeah, there won't be any fans in the building, or if there are, it'll just be a select few that will be able to get in the door. Everyone's going to have to wear a mask, including the players, coaches, everybody in the building. And that 50-person limit is from the government and saying that, you know, that's all that they're going to allow into buildings right now. And that could go down. It was at 25 earlier this year under COVID protocols. And if the state continues to trend upward in case numbers, then that could be a point too where it gets to 25. The other thing that the governor can do in all of this is just say, hey, look, we're going to go completely remote learning. And if that's the case, then sports are out essentially across the state. And so there's a lot of power trip going on right here right now in Illinois and ultimately if I had to say the governor is going to probably win all of those because he's won all of them up until this point I don't see much changing going forward yeah unfortunately for the kids yeah so um not just basketball players affected of course uh the IHSA moved to all the other sports what what goes on with them wrestling's moved to the summer season and what's going to go on with the other sports so football is scheduled to start mid-February. That was delayed in the fall, pushed back to the quote-unquote spring, but it's really going to start in, in February, March, April. I think it raises questions on how much that is going to happen now. If you can't get basketball off the ground, and I understand it's indoors, it's different, but if you can't play basketball with smaller amounts of numbers, guys banging on each other, everything else, which you're also going to have in football, then is, is football really realistic in that sense too? And I think those are fair, legitimate questions to ask moving forward. I don't have the answer to that, but I think that's what football coaches are going to be watching closely now as we get closer and closer to that February. I think it's 15th or 16th start date. What have, what I'm sure you've talked to many coaches, um, you, many basketball coaches in your area. What are they saying? So they're just asking questions right now. I think they're excited that, the IHSA overall decided to make this move and try to take a stand and stand up for its kids and its association and, you know, the right to be able to make a choice to play. 
But at the end of the day, there's so many overlying factors in that, that I think they're hesitant today. You know, maybe the emotion and high of yesterday caught them off guard. And it, it, certainly it did for most, I would say pretty confidently. But then you start to ask them questions and the reality starts to set in of, okay, what is this realistically going to look like? And, and how could this play out? And November 16th isn't that far away. It's just two weeks from this coming Monday. And so with that start date there, you know, and no clearance from the governor, I think there's going to be a pretty tenuous couple of weeks coming up here. Yep. Should be, uh, should be exciting for sure. But uh, um, well, how do you see this playing out? Because obviously, you know, basketball can't go. There's not a good chance that this doesn't look good for football. Is there a possibility you think that basketball players and football players could go with it? And for some seniors in there could go their entire senior year without playing either sport. Yeah. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, unfortunately. And that's just the part of the state that we live in. We've, we've seen several, several people, transfer out of state or just decide that they're going to play club ball and not even bother with school ball or anything else. The fallout is pretty significant from that. And I think it's going to continue for a while here, but look, I think it's pretty realistic shot that we could get to a point where we're not seeing either sport or the kids are going to have to pick one or the other if they're going on at the same time. Yeah. And that could, and that's going to create a, a, a major mess because we, of course, that debate has been going on throughout, not just in Illinois, but through every state that's trying to deal with this. But anyway, but Brett Barons, thank you so much for coming on and explaining all this. Good luck with all this down there. And uh, um, hope you guys are staying safe down there in uh, Champaign. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity. And we'll see what happens the next couple of weeks, couple of months. Hopefully the kids are going to get a chance to compete and do it safely. And I think that's the goal for everybody in this is to find a way to effectively do both of those.